vats of gunpowder. Acres of chemicals. A magician's toolbox. And an explosive product. This is definitely not your average factory. This company produces some of the greatest fireworks in the world. It really is, you know, I, I, it is magic. I remember as a kid watching their fire shows and just going, wow. And their next show is one of the toughest they've ever attempted. Pulling it off takes 200 controllers, kilometers of wire, and 6,000 separate fireworks. And every one is handmade. Enter the iconic Howard & Sons Pyrotechnic Company in Willerowang, Australia, and discover what it takes to set the skies on fire. Invite these guys to a party, and it's guaranteed to end with a bang. Andrew and Christian Howard are fourth-generation master pyrotechnicians and the driving force behind iconic Australian firework company, Howard & Sons. My uh, great-grandfather, Sidney Howard, started the business back in 1922. Today, Christian and myself continue the tradition, so four generations, 89 years. In 1999, Andrew and Christian added their own twist to the Howard family recipe. Show designer Stuart Bensley joined the team. Yeah, just decided one day to give it a go, and that was 12 years ago, 11 years ago. From their head office in Sydney, Australia, this explosive trio designs, creates and performs around 600 world-class firework shows every year. This show over here is for the launch of the Eye of Malaysia wheel. This is the Australia Day Spectacular in Darling Harbour. This is the Olympic Stadium in Sydney. And this was the, the Melbourne Commonwealth Games. Yeah, there's a mixture of about 600 on average per year. All different locations around, uh, around our backyard, around Australia, around the world. So, it keeps us busy. While Andrew and Stuart focus on designing these masterpieces, putting the bang in this conceptual brilliance falls firmly in Christian's lap. We also want to, you know, you know, go right to the boundary too. We don't want to keep it so simple that mm. it's boring. Christian Howard is the company's master alchemist. And he creates his magic in Walerawang a small town about 100 kilometers to the west of Sydney. Approach the factory, and you'd be forgiven for thinking you'd missed the turning and stumbled into the neighboring farm. This collection of small buildings sprinkled across this 300-acre site looks more like a dairy than an explosives manufacturing facility. Even the locals are in on the ruse. This setup is similar across firework factories the world over. And there's a good reason for it. Safety. Because underneath this calm exterior lies an explosive, innovative mega factory, producing some of the greatest pyrotechnics on the planet. Basic firework construction has changed little since its invention by the Chinese in the 10th century. But over the years, master pyrotechnicians have added their own secret twist. And they've wowed audiences ever since. I think it's the, the, the mystery and the magic of fireworks. Very, very few people in the world know how fireworks work. People are always wondering how that was done, or, or how did they do that, or what's coming next. It really is, you know, uh, uh, it is magic. Creating this magic 
takes years of experience, a calm disposition, and an expert team. Meet the Pyro Boys. These pyrotechnic masterminds practice their science in small bare huts called mixing sheds. The almost flimsy buildings are akin to a wizard's kitchen. Nothing is high tech. There's no electricity, not even lighting. The silver wall covering helps counter this by reflecting natural light. But what they do have is a foolproof escape route. You try and set up most of your machines close to those doorways as well, and if something goes wrong and you're stunned, you need to you know, come back, hit that panic bar, and you're out. So we hope not to use that. Today's job, making effects for aerial shells. Aerial fireworks all follow a similar construction. An initial fuse ignites a lift charge, launching the shell skyward. As the firework soars, the lift charge ignites a time fuse, which then burns for a preset period. When the clock hits zero, it ignites the bursting charge, which breaks the shell apart, lighting all the effects contained in the firework at exactly the right moment. Hundreds of different effects can be produced in a range of patterns and colours. Stars are one of the ingredients that create these effects. Green plays a prominent role in many firework displays. So to create just the right shade, Christian turns okay. to an old family recipe. So what we're doing here is a process of mixing a star formula. It's actually electric green, something that's been in our family formulas for some time. This family legacy goes back almost a century. Howard & Sons is among the oldest and longest surviving fireworks manufacturers in Australia and they've seen their fair share of change over the years. In 1967, Australia started to ban the sale of fireworks to the public. By 2009, the ban had stretched across the country, a killer blow for fireworks manufacturers. When they did ban it, yeah, it had a big impact on our business. It turned from being quite a broad fireworks company and distributing huge amounts of fireworks to a marketplace so that market now no, no longer existing. So it turned into a professional display company very quickly. And their latest display is pulling out all the stops. The Howard's team is taking their pyro magic to Canada to compete in one of the world's toughest firework competitions. Montreal's annual fireworks festival, Le International de Feu. They'll go head-to-head -head with teams from England, USA, China, Czech Republic, France, Italy, and Canada. It's not their first attempt at this crown. Howard and Sons are reigning 2008 silver champions, and they want to do it again. The theme for their Montreal extravaganza is Colours of Kakadu, a show representing the seasons of this iconic Australian national park. Once the show starts and you, and you look at the theme from Colours of Kakadu and the music that reflects that theme, the audience are really going to feel like they're there, sitting by a lagoon, yeah. and particularly when the set piece frames are light up and all that sort of stuff. I think. We're also being uniquely Australian without being cliché 
land down under, which everyone's heard a million times. So yeah. we're really pushing a unique angle and creative. And they'll fire this masterpiece in perfect time to a live band. But that's not the biggest challenge. Creating the pyrotechnics that will see them walk away winners is. Stuart's show needs 6,000 separate fireworks. And every one is handmade. In the aftermath of 9-11, America's most secretive government agency was put under the microscope. We did not grasp the magnitude of a threat that had been gathering over a considerable period of time. Now, for the first time since its radical transformation, the National Security Agency has granted us unprecedented access. We're going to take a look at something that has never been seen on TV before. Inside the NSA. 8.30 tonight, new to National Geographic Channel. It's rush hour at Mazda with end of financial year deals flying out the door. Be quick and grab a fantastic deal on selected vehicles in the Mazda passenger range. Rush in for an end of financial year deal at your local Mazda dealer now. The new Ram Sabre account has one of the highest rates out there, 5.75%. And you can sign up easily online. Small effort, big gain. The high interest Ram Sabre account. Jump online at rams.com.au. Rams, simply better. To make it from home, you need to be connected. Mum, I'm working. Slick and quick. Oh, wireless. Smoking. Why print when you can pick smoke? Get a bonus gift card up to $50 or a creative pack up to $100 when you buy a selected Pixma printer before July 31. The solution to the world's energy needs is right here in our hands. With our unique UCG and GTL processes, which are more efficient and less invasive than conventional coal mining, Link Energy is providing a much cleaner alternative. By creating ultra-clean synthetic fuel from coal, Link Energy is helping ensure the world's future is cleaner and safer. And that's fuel for thought. To find out more, visit our website. At Pedigree, everything we do is for the love of dogs. So extra protein and vitamins are packed into every bag. Because every dog deserves leading nutrition. From wet nose to wiggly bum. Pedigree, we're for dogs. At Nissan Now, you can get a great finance rate across the Juarez range. And on every kind of X-Trail. And on any Murano. But it ends June 30, so see your Nissan dealer now. I feel like I've lived on Titanic. I've got it ingrained in my memory. I wanted to dive the wreck more than I wanted to make the movie. See you in the sunshine. The dream come true for me. The more you work on this, the more you can bring it into focus. This shouldn't be all sort of nicey-nicey. Let's beat it up. It's time to just say, this is what really happened. Titanic. James Cameron. The Final Word. 7.30 tomorrow. Exclusive to National Geographic Channel. You could win $5,000 cash. Just go to our website, enter tonight's code word, Howard and & Sons, and tell us in 25 words or less who you think is a great Australian and why. Watch Great Australian 7.30 next Sunday for another chance to win. Back in the mixing shed, the team are busy with one of the show's key ingredients, stars. Stars are unassuming little pellets. Until... They're added to a firework. They are the pyrotechnician's staple. And like all great recipes, success starts with the right ingredients. Chemicals go in one by one, each serving a specific purpose. Potassium perchlorate helps accelerate the burn. Like adding fuel, to a fire. Next, a second oxidizer, the mineral barium nitrate. This enhances the burn and adds the all-important green coloring. Then, a little spice is added, called parlon. Parlon's a chlorinated rubber, and again, it is uh, another 
colouring enhancer. Um, so it's going in there to brighten up the green colour. A few more secret ingredients are added to the potion, followed by dextrin. This natural carbohydrate glues the mix together. Without this binder, the firework would fizzle out at ground level. With all these volatile ingredients combined, something has to keep them in check. A chemical stabiliser. Boric acid, um, and this is a stabiliser for this formulation, so it doesn't react with the other chemicals. These guys make it look easy, but creating the right mix takes chemical wizardry and a great deal of care. Because the base ingredient for every firework is black powder. Black powder is extremely dangerous to work with and highly unstable under the wrong conditions. This site stores tons of it and it's handled with respect. Just the slightest mistake could be fatal. To reinforce the safety net, these storage sheds are designed to release a blast, not absorb it. While the pyro boys continue with the stars, Stuart is busy with the Montreal instruction manual. The Montreal site is broken into ramps encircling a lake. Every individual firework must be in the right position to create the overall effect. And that's no easy feat when you consider the numbers. This show fills a 40-foot shipping container, takes as much as four kilometers of wire, over 200 controllers, 6,000 individual ignition cubes, and over three tons of fireworks. Oh, it's crazy. You've got 6,000 things that need to get to the right position and get plugged into the right hole, pointing the right way. Before they even face this challenge, the show must travel 16,000 kilometres around the world, intact and on time. It's as big as a rock concert. And a long way from Mulerawang, where pyrotechnician Laurie Chu is busy constructing gerbs for the Montreal show. Gerbs are a simple firework producing a jet of sparks from a shell. They're made according to the desired burn time. This spindle compresses the chemical ingredients into a tube or casing. Accurately measuring the ingredients is crucial. Laurie uses a simple method to ensure his measurements hit the right mark. Sometimes you might have to put 20 scoops in, so you just measure it, mark it with a texture, and stop when you get to that mark. And nearly all the time you're just about spot on with the, with the burn times. Compression is paramount to performance and safety. If you um, put it in loose, it'll blow up. So you have to have it packed in so, so it doesn't detonate on you. These cardboard tubes, called casings, provide a rigid container allowing the layers of chemicals to be firmly pushed into place. The more compact the chemicals, the bigger the bang. Only the best materials and workmanship will produce the best fireworks. This is the, this is the highest quality casings that we can get, and it really is a very high quality. You know, you look at some fires, I mean, you could basically touch that with your hand and the casing will fall apart. So a lot of, when producing quality product, you need to start with quality across the board. So you need to start with great quality chemicals, good compositions, good formulas, uh, good equipment, good casing. You have a bad case, it's your weakest link. Individually, Gerbs are simple pyrotechnics, but group them together, the effect is dramatic. I'm going to be putting them in groups of eight. You'll see them in Montreal too. Laurie uses a tube to hold the gerbs in place before adding a lift charge. That's all important bang. This is black powder. There's about 25 to 30 grams of black powder in there for the lift charge. An igniter is inserted. 
And finally, the gerbs are tightly packed in paper and tape. And that's it. Back in the mixing shed, those green stars are almost finished. So now that that's mixed together, that's now ready for wetting down. Wetting down bonds the ingredients together, like adding liquid to a cake mix. Except in this case, the right liquid is crucial. If you add water to a magnesium formulation, there can be a heat buildup, and in the drying process, they can actually combust and catch fire. So methylated spirits is mixed with water to prevent this spontaneous combustion. It's time to turn the mixture into magic. Their magician's wand comes in the shape of a small pump. We're actually manually pushing that pressure down to, to pack these cylinders, and then the pistons are pushed forward and um, brought level with the top of those, and uh, the pellets basically drop off and with our little stars made. While the pyro boys pump out the thousands of stars needed for Montreal, Andrew and Christian have another job to do. It's a public holiday in Australia to celebrate the Queen's birthday, and a local town is putting on a show. Only half of the manufacturing process for a fireworks display happens in the factory. The rest is done on the day. Once the button is pushed, there is no second chance. Large or small, every single show gets the same world-class Howard treatment, and preparation is key to that success. It'll probably take us till about six or so to set up. We've got these two racks still to go and another three racks in the van. And we also have that sign there to set up as well, so a bit to it. You've got to then join all the modules up and do a circuit test, make sure you have all your shots. The racks hold tubes called mortars. These, in turn, hold the fireworks. The mortar tubes have really replaced like, so an old-fashioned old traditional sky rocket where it used to be on a stick. That stick would give the rocket some trajectory. The aerial shells and, and mines and comets are placed down the bottom of the mortar tube. They give the shells direction but they also enable the shell to be launched. So it's a confined space where at the bottom of the shell is a black powder lifting charge. Once ignited, it explodes and creates a huge amount of gas and energy that launches that item up into the sky. Only a few hours until the show, and the weather takes a turn for the worse. Yeah, uh, wind is the worst factor. But these shells are fairly waterproof, being inside the plastic bag. Weather is the pyrotechnician's enemy. And Montreal gets its fair share of summer rain. The biggest problem to any firework show is usually just the weather. You know, it can really make it pleasure to work on or it can make it hell. You know, it could be raining, it could be cold, and you've still got to go out there and work in it because you've got a Saturday night deadline that you can't miss. Long gone are the days of lighting the blue touch paper and running in the opposite direction. Today, pyrotechnicians use computerized controllers. Built-in ignition wires attached to a firing panel that's programmed to fire every shell in sequence. Just one button, and there's no turning back. This 15-minute show takes five hours to set up and uses 20 controllers. Montreal takes five days and more than 200 controllers. as it tries, the weather doesn't stop the celebrations.
time to pack up and head back to the factory to finish the stars. This batch of stars are ready for the next step, priming. The pellets are coated with black powder, a crucial step to help them ignite. Small handfuls go into a mixer, a splash of water, and their explosive cloak takes shape. So it's just slowly rolling so that you can get a tumbling effect. And it's just to, to get a coating onto these stars. Once coated, they'll be sent to a drying room because moisture reduces the firepower. Even this oven is low tech. We actually have a heated floor here. We actually run uh, it's hot water through the floor to heat it up. So again, keeping electronics away and keeping a um, spark-free environment. With just weeks to go to Montreal, the pyro boys have their work cut out for them. It's time to turn those stars into full-on fireworks. First thing to go into the casing, the lift charge. Then the all-important igniter is added. Finally, the magic ingredients. Yep, these are the stars we primed earlier. Yeah, the green. Just a few simple steps, and those unassuming little pellets are ready to set the Montreal skies on fire. But the job isn't over yet. Each batch of newly made fireworks is tested. Three, two, one. Yeah, what I've got set up here, I've got um, down here, I've got a, a whistle gerb. It's a four second gerb. We're going to make that into a whistle mine. Yeah, the whistle and gerb went, went the four seconds which we, which we wanted, and the silver jet went three metres. So, yeah, and if Christian was happy with the way that it burnt, yeah, yeah we'll go with that. Christian's busy testing some batches of his own. These are the stars they made earlier. Stars can't be tested on the ground. So you can see all that molten there, where it just lumps up. We get that going through the atmosphere, we can get a real nice tail off that. So those flashing droplets. You can't get that on the ground, you can't see it. It has to go through the atmosphere to do that. That's how we can make silver, silver tails, gold tails, and pretty awesome effect. In the aftermath of 9-11, America's most secretive government agency was put under the microscope. We did not grasp the magnitude of a threat that had been gathering over a considerable period of time. Now, for the first time since its radical transformation, the National Security Agency has granted us unprecedented access. We're going to take a look at something that has never been seen on TV before. Inside the NSA. 8.30 tonight, new to National Geographic Channel. Wheat, chia, barley, oats, rice, and corn. So what's your act today? A disappearing act. <laughs> New Grain Wave 7 Grains and Seeds. We all know NIB has great value health cover for young people. So I'm here in Young with a young bloke, Steve Young from Young. You've just turned 31. Yeah, mate, 31 years young. Well, you'll be wanting NIB hospital cover before July 1 to avoid paying the government's lifetime health cover loading. So if you're a young Australian or an Australian from young, join NIB before July 1. It's worth it. Take it away, Tom Paul Young. Mazda has shaped a new kind of SUV. One that can run for 100 kilometres, yet amazingly uses little as 5.1 litres of fuel. Can carry five in supreme safety, yet is compact and feels ready to pounce. All new Mazda CX-5 with Sky Active technology. It's an SUV, but not as you know it. To be successful within the Adidas Group, Melissa knew immediately she needed to become a CPA. To increase his opportunities and be promoted at Coca-Cola Amatil, 
Chris knew straight away what he had to do. But to get the advantage that only the CPA program can give you, you too must act as soon as possible because CPA program enrolments close on July 23. So get the CPA advantage and enrol now. Campbell, that's amazing. You know what else is amazing? Rice cooked with Campbell's real stock instead of water. It turns rice into rice with a delicious flavor. To build perfection on a massive scale, the design must be beautiful. The engineering, flawless. And the trials, punishing. Experience the wonder and ingenuity behind some of the world's most iconic machines. A brand new season of Mega Factories. 7.30 Tuesday on National Geographic Channel. After months of preparation, the on-site storage shed is packed to the gunnels with a vast selection of explosives. The next challenge is getting them from Australia to Canada. It's Rachel Nichols' job to make sure the fireworks arrive in Montreal on time and intact. Internationally, it's, it's been one of the biggest challenges of my role so far. They have restrictions on certain items and sizes that can be imported. The fireworks travel by sea, but the team will fly, and like the rest of us, they face airport security. Since 9-11, transporting even the simplest commodities is a difficult enough job. But when you work in an explosives factory, it's a whole other challenge. I've been swabbed a million times. I was coming back from Darwin one year, fired the show off the barge, had a shower, got on the plane, and I had a controller with me, and that actually had some stuff on it, just just like, it looks like dirt, but it's, it's actually residue, and they swabbed it and didn't find anything, so. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> Before the fireworks even get to the security gate, there are any number of things that can go wrong. Weather, regulations, even a typo can stop the shipment. The final say is up to the captain of the boat as to if he accepts your container. Uh, if he thinks that there's any inherent risk, then it can often be left on the side of the wharf still. If the fireworks and the team don't arrive in Montreal on time, the show is over before it begins. With the fireworks on their way, Back in Sydney, Stuart is preparing for a very different display. Tonight, it's the last night of the Vivid Festival in Sydney. We're working on and we've presented the uh, fire dance uh, installation that's been running um, 15 times every night. Tonight's the 18th night. It's a twist on the traditional fireworks theme. Every hour we do uh, two shows different soundtracks with choreographed flames that go about eight to 10 meters high and moves around the bay in time with the music. It gives Stuart the chance to practice some techniques for firing on water, a key criteria for Montreal. Basically, we've designed the whole system here to be installed into a marine environment where there's always wind and waves, and as you can see from the ferries, there'll be a wash that comes in. So we've designed everything so it's got a little bit of movement. It's been in the water now for nearly one month. And during the install, we, we had 40 knot winds. And it survived, so.
Stewart survives the rigors of Sydney Harbour. But his next battle is one of the most important of his career. And the countdown to success or failure happens 16,000 kilometers away in Montreal. The world's most prestigious pyrotechnic competition takes place at La Ronde, a theme park on one of the city's islands in the middle of the St. Lawrence River. This competition started in 1985, and it's our 27th edition this year, and it's marvelous. Only 7,000 tickets are available for each show, but thousands of people line up across the park and the local bridge to see the displays. It's so big that the city has to close roads to accommodate the crowds. But at the end of the day, there's only one opinion that counts. The judges. It's Tuesday. The crew have arrived at the competition site in Montreal. To their relief, so have the fireworks. Well, most of them. Everything's arrived here in Montreal, which is a good start. We're just waiting on a bit of air freight of some more specialist equipment that was on another job last week. And that's scheduled to arrive tomorrow, so everyone's probably uh, a little bit tired from the travel. It takes a long time to get here. With just five days to set up, even a local team would feel the pressure. But for the Howard team, the stress is compounded by almost 24 hours traveling, a 16 hour time difference, and killer jet lag. After all their hard work, Christian and the Pyro boys won't be watching this firsthand. They've had to stay in Australia to keep up with the order books. But Stuart and Andrew have brought their A team. Shane, Mark, and Ewan are old hands at this business. But this show is a first, even for them. You've got to have the experience of doing complex shows. So, like I said, this show's not like anyone before, so it's not to say I you know, bought Shane or Mark because they've done this before. They haven't done this before, but they're good at, at, at um, doing something according to the plan, sticking to the plan and executing it. The first job in this execution prepping 6,000 fireworks. It's just the beginning, and everyone's aware of the challenge ahead. Things go wrong. If you're down to your last couple of hours before the show and you've got a bucket load of cables that have come to the firing position and some monkey hasn't labelled them as to what belongs to what, then, yeah, you see the pressure. Today, there's a different pressure looming. True to Stuart's prediction, the weather is threatening to stop play. If this storm moves in, the team moves out. A spark from an electrical storm could set this show off earlier than planned. Early knockoff? No. Okay. Unless the storm comes. If the storm comes, we'll go. OK. Pray for rain. The threat of bad weather passes, and Andrew makes the call to stay put. While Mark and Shane sort the effects, Ewan creates the firing platforms. Called slabs, these hold the fireworks in the right position and point them in the right direction. Mark and Shane will fill each of these slabs with the right effects. What we're doing is we're plugging all the shots in. We've physically built the, the rack, we've put all the shots in the right place at the right angles. Every shot's got a label and it tells you what angle it's got to go, where it's got to be. And then every shot, it's critical, they've got to be plugged into the exact right number. It's fireworks by numbers, and the numbers are big. 202 controllers, each wired to 32 cues, firing 6,000 effects there's plenty of room for error. The initial preparation happens off-site. When the slabs are ready, they'll move to the ramps. 
The organisers of the competition lay on a support team to help the contestants with the enormous task ahead. Paul is the man in charge. Normally, when we come here at each uh, company that come, it's like a beach. It's complete, it's clear, there's nothing, it's level. Uh, everything is, is, is really clean. Except this year, there is someone already hogging the real estate. It's Wednesday, and Italy are still in position. Tonight is their shot at the crown. Without access to the ramps, the Aussie team has only one option. To take their seats for their competitors' display. Italian style, it's a breathtaking show. A battle of angels and demons fought across the night sky. The next day, there's more than logistics on Andrew's mind. The product was superb. You couldn't really fault the show, so yeah, it raises the bar that we've got to jump over to win an award here. We, we can only control our show, so we'll just focus on our show, make sure that we do everything we possibly can to get it technically as perfect as possible. Hopefully it's enough to, to win the medal. With friendly farewells to their opponents, it's time to ramp it up. Thursday. The clock is ticking. Only a few days to go and they've only just started on the ramps. First job, clearing out the Italian team's leftovers and setting up their own pyrotechnic banquet. As Andrew oversees the setup, Paul faces a very different challenge. Yes, we have to construct a pontoon wide enough for, for the band. We have to verify that we have our, our anchor at the right place. We will have to planify the, the movement of the stage, of the uh, musician on stage, and all kinds of uh, small things like that. So, and rehearsal, and so a lot of things for, for a thing that normally people think that, oh, it's, it's only a band, they put, they put them there. But no, 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 it's a lot more complicated. By the end of the day, two of the four ramps are almost complete. Final status today is basically we've um, checked uh, ramp one and ramp four. Um, so we've fixed all the little issues where shots uh, either have been pulled out or haven't been plugged in properly. And we've tested and we're missing a couple of shells which we, uh, we know are missing from the show. So we'll test it in, in those two areas and we can move on to ramp three and ramp two tomorrow get them finished and uh, tested and we're all good. It's Friday. Just 36 short hours left and the team is literally down to the wire. Final shots are in position, and the wiring connected. But it's taken all day to complete. There is no time to test the system.
In the aftermath of 9-11, America's most secretive government agency was put under the microscope. We did not grasp the magnitude of a threat that had been gathering over a considerable period of time. Now, for the first time since its radical transformation, the National Security Agency has granted us unprecedented access. We're going to take a look at something that has never been seen on TV before. Inside NSA, America's cyber secrets. Next, new to National Geographic Channel. Samsung Galaxy S3, designed for humans. At Nissan Now, you can get a great finance rate across the Juarez range, and on every kind of X-Trail, and on any Murano. But it ends June 30, so see your Nissan dealer now. We all know NIB has great value health cover for young people. So I'm here in Young with a young bloke. Steve Young from Young. You've just turned 31. Yeah, mate. 31 years young. Well, you'll be wanting NIB hospital cover before July 1 to avoid paying the government's lifetime health cover loading. So if you're a young Australian or an Australian from Young, join NIB before July 1. It's worth it. Take it away. Tom Paul Young. Who does end of financial year deals? Like an Epson multifunction wireless printer, just $99. That's half price. Who crunches the numbers on end of financial year deals? Dick does. Hello, we're wheat. Chia. Puppy. Barley. Oats. Rice. And corn. So what's your act today? A disappearing act. <laughs> New Grain Wave 7 Grains and Seeds. Who says the everyday has to be so everyday? Experience the amazing every day. The new Nokia Lumia. At Just Car Insurance, we're into imported, high performance and modified cars. So if it's not just a car and you want insurance that offers unlimited legal mods, call Just Car Insurance on 13 13 26 or buy a new policy online and save 50 bucks. Well, honey, what do you reckon? It's nothing like a golf. Hands-free parking technology. Like a golf. It's like turbocharged and direct injected. Oh yeah, like a golf. But it handles like a golf. <laughs> if you listen carefully, sounds just like a golf. For a limited time, get free CTP, dealer delivery, stamp duty and rego on selected golf models. I feel like I've lived on Titanic. I've got it ingrained in my memory. I wanted to dive the wreck more than I wanted to make the movie. See you in the sunshine. A dream come true for me. The more you work on this, the more you can bring it into focus. This yeah. shouldn't be all sort of nicey-nicey. Let's beat it up. It's time to just say, this is what really happened. Titanic. James Cameron. The Final Word. 7.30 tomorrow. Exclusive to National Geographic Channel. You could win $5,000 cash. Just go to our website, enter tonight's code word, Howard and & Sons, and tell us in 25 words or less who you think is a great Australian and why. Watch Great Australian 7.30 next Sunday for another chance to win. Saturday morning. D-Day. Stuart's first job. Making sure everything is linked from the ramps to the control room. This is the heart of the operation. But something's wrong. Ramp, 
Francois, on ramp one we might have a cable issue, it's not uh, five power test. Communication testing. test is good. Five power test, no good. Ramp 3 has a bad rail board. It's Stuart's worst nightmare. Okay, what? Have we replaced the cable from, uh, from the patch board to the first module? Fixing it will take all the time they have left. Okay. And we don't have enough lights here to merge. So what we're going to do, channels 1, 2, 3, 4, we just join, 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 join back to center, and then straight in. Well, let's try the first one. And then we can do a five power test on it. We run a test, and then we can do the rest like that. Yeah. If this doesn't work, the show's over before it begins. Stuart can only wait and hope. It's taken hours, but finally everything in the control room is good to go. Okay, five power good, five power good, all fixed. It's taken a huge chunk out of their day. We would have liked to have been probably uh, two or three hours ahead of where we are. At least their other pre-show fear hasn't been realised. Very fortunate with the weather. I've got to say, if we had any wet weather over the five days, we would be really pushing it uphill to try and get the show up now. So very fortunate with the weather and and a few hours to go now. I'm pretty confident we'll get there. Everyone's working as hard as they can, as fast as they can, but still doing all the fundamental things right. as the audience and judges take their seats. The team is still battling the deadline. Nine months of off-site preparation and five days of setup is about to be blown sky high. There's nothing left to do but press the button. Pyro Boys creations light up the Montreal landscape. But waiting for the audience's reaction makes for a long 30 minutes. It's a standing ovation <laughs> and a mix of emotions. Uh, relieved, relieved that it's all over. Uh, you know, this time tomorrow night I'll be on a plane home. So yeah, different. You know, on we go to a different place. We pack up out of here. I was enjoying it, but as the person who's designed it and programmed it, you, you pick up all the little, all the little slight technical problems you might have there. But you know, it's still a great show, so I'm, I'm pretty happy.
almost two weeks after their show, and they get the news they've been waiting for. The Howards team will be adding another trophy to their cabinet, collected on their behalf by officials from the local Australian consulate. And to add icing to the cake, the show also won the award for best soundtrack. This world-class team reached for the stars and caught themselves a planet in the shape of Jupiter, proving once again that they are a pyrotechnic force to be reckoned with. And of course, there's only one way to celebrate.